Okay, like I said, somebody had ported these before and they'd done a decent job somewhat of, of opening them up, but they were a little rough. They were, they were kind of humpy. I call them ruffles and ridges, kind of like the potato chip. You know how it's got them ruffles and ridges. So I took some time and went in there with a grinder and re-blended them. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to finish going back over them with 200 grit. Because they were only taken to about a 50 grit poly. And after going in there with the grinder and kind of leveling them out, I kind of seen there was a little bit of room for improvement. So I'm going to go ahead and repolish them. Like I said, this is 200 grit. And then I'm going to go to 340 with the cross buffs to pull it in. And then we're going to go down in there and work on the bowls and, and reshape the guide area and the wall. I'm going to show you what's going on with that. And uh, we'll save the valve job for after all this short term work and all this is done. All right. So... Anyway, that's all I want to show you on that right now. Once again, the main reason that I do this is because of um, uh, carbon buildup. When carbon sticks to the chamber and builds up, it will increase compression and raise compression ratio. And with uh, 350 inches, he's going to be real close to detonation. So one thing we don't want happening is any increases in compression ratio due to carbon buildup. Plus, there's supposed to be a thermodynamic thing going on here where um, the um, heat transfer, uh, thermal reflectivity, excuse me there, Yank, me and you got in a discussion about that once. <laughs> Uh, it's supposed to help horsepower. I'm not saying it doesn't, but that's the reason I do it. So anyway, I'm going to touch it all up with this uh, grit finish right here with the sand roll. And then we'll go to the cross buffs and pull them in. And then we'll start work deep down deep inside of the uh, above. Now we're getting ready to go uh, to the final stage of this. And you know, I, I, I forgot to mention something in the combustion chambers. Um, one of the requests that Mr. Imhoff had was that uh, he believed that the heads, one head to the other head, that there was a CC difference. Um, when I checked them, there was from this pair to the other pair over here to the side of it, there was one CC difference. That's right, one CC difference between this set head's chambers and this head's. So what uh, he wanted me to do was mill the heads or go in there and alleviate the chambers to balance them. So what I did is on this set um, over here, I went in there and did a little more blending, a little smoothing, and went back in and CC'd them all and uh, this took quite a bit of time, by the way, and went in there and alleviated them, and now I'm right at 0.4, which is under one half cc from this head to this one. Um, I get a lot of people that ask me this, and I guess Mr. Imhoff is on this belief too, but, uh, you know, that getting them exact, yeah, in a perfect world, it would be a great thing to have them all within one-tenth of one cc. But in, in, in realistically, when you get a set of heads on the combustion chambers within one cc on both heads, that's pretty damn good. I mean, you know, that's really good. Now, if you was racing in some kind of uh, NHRA super stock or something where every tenth of a cc counted, yeah, you know, I could see it. But I went ahead at his request and got this one in just under a half cc from this head. So they're both pretty equal. Um, I did leave that part out of it in the beginning when I told you. Um, so anyway, on to the, what we're doing here. 
Uh, like I said, and the chambers were a bit rough. The guy that done them, he didn't do a bad job, but he just didn't blend them and roll them precisely like he should. It had ruffles and ridges. By God, they don't have them now. I got them straightened out pretty good, if I got to say so myself. But now we're going to the final deal. This is a cross buff. And what it does, it takes all the lines and that, uh, that a sand roll at it, it, it 200 grit leaves. So what it's going to do is it's going to make it have a really good polished look. It'll... Like I said, and it lets you get in the corners. Now, the only way you can do this is with the valves out. Well, here's another thing. Let's try to get a little bit better look. Of course, on the other side, it's going to look a lot better when I turn it the other way. Um, she's starting to come in now. I mean, you can see the difference from this side here with the lines and the scratches to this, but where it really shines when I take the carburetor cleaner and go back in there and hit them, it just it has a glow to it, a look. And uh, this is something special I'm doing for Mr. Imhoff. I, you know, he uh, really emphasized how he wanted it to look really good as well as, you know, perform. But um, the cross buffs, they are just a finishing tool. Y'all know I've talked in my videos. Really, performance-wise, this doesn't do a damn thing. It's strictly a cosmetic thing, so when the customer sees it, they look at it, and they'll put their fingers on it, and they look at how pretty it is, and it feels smooth. From a horsepower slash a longevity thing, once again, the only thing this does is keep carbon from building that up, and, and, and if you hit them with a 50-grit sand roll, that pretty much does it. If you really wanted to finesse it, you could go to 100 grit, and you're guaranteed no carbon will probably ever build up on it. Going to this level is strictly a cosmetic thing and is really a waste of time. But, you know, for you DIY guys, uh, that's a good thing. Now, one, one thing I wanted to bring to this approach about and, and, and give you is think of it like this, okay? If it takes me four to six hours to go through actually closer to eight if you count from the beginning stones 50 grit 100 grit 200 grit and then the buffs to bring the chambers just for the polishing we're not talking any material removal if i have as much as six to eight hours how can i put that time into removing raw material and, and, and shaping it that makes the horsepower difference. In other words, there has to be a divide of how much time that you're actually putting in the cylinder head for cosmetics, not to mention these things are not cheap, neither is the sand rolls, compressor time and everything else. Well, the answer is you, you can't. You have to divide it. Would you rather have 40 hours of grinding and raw material removal that make the difference in horsepower and the way it runs or 30 hours and then 10 hours of polishing, which virtually does nothing? It's just... Uh, you know, it's one of them things I try to meet a compromise because I don't want nobody to get to head and go, oh, it ain't had this done because magazines have stereotyped porting and polishing for so many years. But I just wanted to take a minute out because this ain't something that I normally do. But I just wanted to, I've always wanted to really fine tune a set of 186s. When I get finished and I spray them with carburetor cleaner, you're going to see the polish that this gives out. It is really beautiful. That's that's one thing about it. Uh, the valve job and the guide work on the head was a little bit below standard. Uh, had big wide seats on it. Seat location was all over the place, which we're fixing to do. The valve job here. The last thing after polishing the chambers that I have to do is go in here and reshape the guide, bottle nose it, move the walls. As soon as I get that done, then we're going to the valve job, and you're going to get to see how far off this was. We're going to really bring this valve job into snuff here and give him something really nice. All right. Anyway, just wanted to go over that to one part. Let me see if I can get you a little bit closer shot as I do it. Maybe it'll show. It's hard to tell.
wish you could get the view that I got. I mean, I'm telling you, it really, that just pulls, it, it just brings like a fine polish out of it. But anyway, once I get the carburetor cleaner on it and get the dull grit, which you can see on the cross buff where it's red and in the black, how it takes the grit. Once you take that carburetor cleaner and put on there, man, does it look good. All right, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and finish the polishing. Now we're fixing to get serious. We're fixing to dive into the bowls, reshape, move a wall over, and straighten all this out so we get all this work done before we hit the valve job on it. Okay.